What's up YouTube? Jeff back again from DopeTechDaily.com and as you guys can see today we don't have the normal white background going here. I'm actually trying something out a little different. I'm going to try to shoot a few videos during the week while I'm at work at the office here. Um, that reason is because I just don't have enough time to make enough videos at home for you guys to crank out you know three or four a week which I want to do. Uh, now the lighting is not going to be ideal here until I get a little bit better set up move my tripod, my camera over. So I'm gonna to try to make the best of it today and just let me know what you guys think in the comments section. If it's viable, I'll try to get some lighting in my office. It's gonna look a little strange, uh, but we'll get it working eventually. So the video I wanna to do today is actually a seven month uh, review of the Galaxy S7 Edge and talk a little bit about how this phone fits in terms of if you're looking for a Galaxy Note 7 replacement, is this your best option for a Galaxy Note 7 replacement? A lot of people have asked me that question. I just did a video on the Xperia XZ and I said, you know, the Xperia XZ is a good phone. It's a possibility if you want a Galaxy Note 7 replacement, uh, but there are other options out there and the S7 Edge is one that crosses most people's mind right away. So if you check back to my original review of this phone, uh, I love the phone, love the build quality. One of my main complaints about the original phone in the review was that it had a little bit of lag and a little bit of RAM management issues. Uh, this is actually the Exynos version, the international version I imported, as you can tell, because it is the white model and not the black, the gold, uh, or the silver that was sold here in the US. And this model has much less issues with the RAM management and the lag. And actually over time, since I've been using this phone, I haven't had any lag issues at all. You guys can see I'm running Action Launcher 3 now on the phone, but I haven't had any lag issues at all when it comes to scrolling through the apps. You guys can see I keep pretty much a ton of apps open all the time. I haven't had any issues uh, when it comes to using apps, when it comes to navigating the settings menu. I'm still using my dark uh, theme that I showed off in my top nine tips for the Galaxy S7 Edge. If you haven't seen that video, go check it out. But I haven't had any lag issues, especially with this model. Haven't used the Snapdragon 820 version in a while, so it may be a different story there. Um, of course, if you're switching from the Note 7 and coming to the S7 Edge, you do get the same great experience with the camera, uh, the sensor and everything inside. It's pretty much the same. You guys can see my nice 34-inch LG screen there here in my office at the university. Uh, but you do get the same exact great camera. I did a great review on the camera in my full review of this phone originally. Uh, I take a lot of my photos that I post on Twitter. There's a picture of my Note 7, rest in peace, with the uh, Slick Wrap Spigen. Uh, Weapon X case from Justin Mahler. I've got some more of these cases coming from the iPhone, but it just takes great pictures. Uh, there's some of my winnings from a casino night there. Um, you guys can see, and there's my actual winnings I took with the, uh, the camera. Uh, but this camera is great, um, and if you're switching from the Note 7, you're certainly going to be happy with that. Uh, the other thing, of course, is the size. It is a little bit smaller, and the edges are a little bit sharper on the S7 Edge, but it's still a great build. It's not going to give you that same bubbly feeling that you get from the Note 7. And it is a little smaller, but it's not so small that it's going to be a problem. I've heard some people saying that they definitely want a 5.7 inch replacement for their Note 7. But at the end of the day, the difference between 5.5 and 5.7 really isn't that big. And you're not going to notice it that much when you come to the S7 Edge from your Note 7. The build quality still looks beautiful. I like the white color personally, which again, you can't get in the US. One thing you are going to get, uh, of course, when you switch from the Note 7 is you're going to have to go back to micro USB. Uh, from USB Type-C on the Note 7. That's not the biggest deal, but uh, you know, if you got used to the USB Type-C or if you've used that with other devices, uh, it might be getting used to. Still got your headphone jack, shout out to Apple. You got a speaker on the bottom still, and the speaker is not that great of quality, uh, just like the one on the Note 7, which I mentioned in my full review of that phone. Uh, they did update the always-on display. I actually haven't taken the update yet on this phone. I did on my regular Galaxy S7. So if you're using the always-on display on your Galaxy S7 Edge, you're going to get that same great experience that you got with the Note 7, which of course is going to mitigate um, any issues that you have coming from the Note 7 to this device. Uh, when it comes to the software, it's still not the same exact version of TouchWiz that you got on the Note 7 with the Grace UX, uh, but Samsung is working allegedly very hard to get that version brought to the S7 and the S7 Edge. Of course, now that the Note 7 is dead, hopefully they'll be able to double their efforts. Uh, and that just started with bringing the great features you get with the always-on display of the Note 7 to the S7 Edge that I just mentioned. Of course, you've still got themes, which you can see that I'm using here. Uh, and the software on the S7 Edge is very, very nice. You've still got your Edge panel uh, and all the useful things like People Edge, get your sports scores, and Apps Edge right there as well. So overall, I think the experience in terms of the camera, 
software and everything is going to be great. You are missing some things though from the Note 7 to the S7 Edge. You're missing the S Pen, obviously that's the big one. You're missing the iris scanner, of course that's another one. And then I mentioned also the display size is not quite, not quite as big. Um, and then also it is a little sharper. These edges are a little sharper. They don't curve as subtly as the ones on the Note 7. And that's one of the things I miss the most. But I do use a case on my phone. This is the UAG case. I've been using so it's not that big of a deal once you put the case on there but if you're using the phone naked you're definitely going to notice that difference in build quality so i think if you like samsung and you want the camera you get the same waterproofing the same dust resistance you get on the note 7 and you want that same software experience that same beautiful uh, amoled screen all of those bright colors and great brightness on the display the s7 edge really is the best replacement if you want all of that stuff now if you have to have the S Pen features, of course the Note 5 is going to be your only option really, but you're not going to get the Snapdragon 820 or the latest Exynos processor. Uh, you're not going to also get the iris scanner from the Note 7, and you're not going to get the best camera. So if you go back to the Note 5, if you have to have the S Pen, uh, you do lose some of those great features. But overall, I think the S7 Edge is the phone of the year so far for me. I still have the Pixel XL, the LG V20 coming in later this week, but with the display, the camera, the features, uh, and the fact that this phone is actually now dropping in price, uh, all combined for a great value, lightning fast fingerprint scanner. I love everything about this phone, and if you want to stick with Samsung, you're a loyal Samsung user, uh, and you don't have to have the S Pen, I think the S7 Edge is a great pickup. Again, you can save some money because on eBay you can find these very, very cheap. You're definitely going to save money over your Note 7 that you return, probably even maybe 300 bucks over the price of a new Note 7. So those are my thoughts on the Galaxy S7 Edge after about seven months. This is the first Samsung phone I've ever had that hasn't really slowed down that much over time. So very, very impressed with that. Uh, I'm definitely gonna keep using it until the S8 comes out now that the Note 7 is dead. I'll have a full comparison to this in the Pixel XL, the LG V20, which are also two great Note 7 replacement options. So stay tuned for that. Uh, please like and subscribe if you guys enjoy my content so I can make more like this. Let me know what you think of the video quality here in the office. Uh, and what I should do, maybe add in some actual lighting. I'm just using the lighting that's in my office here today to test this out. You guys can find me at dopetechdaily.com, Google Plus, and Instagram and Twitter at the links in the description. I appreciate you guys checking out this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.